Hey everybody, it's Katie. So today I'm gonna to show you guys how to do Viking weave. What is Viking weave? Good thing you asked. This, all this, all this here, all of this stuff, that's Viking weave. I have it in silver, I have some copper samples, I have some brass samples here. These are actually double Viking weave. And then I have a piece here, which is a starter. You can see what it looks like before it's been pulled through the draw plate. So Viking weave is really cool. It's basically just made with wire. It's a weave that you do, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. But depending on how many loops of wire you start with will depend on the thickness of your chain when you're finished, also how many, how many loops of wire and how big your dowel rod is that you do the weave around will make the difference. Also, like with the double weave, I will go over that later on how to create the double weave. I really like the double weave. The double weave I like better than the single, but it does take twice as long really to do because it's much tighter weave, but it creates beautiful results. Now, depending on the thickness of your wire, that also changes a lot of things. So as you can see, there's a lot of variation that can be had here. What we're gonna be working with today is we're gonna be working with some 24 gauge wire. I just have some artistic wire that's silver plated. So we've got silver tone, which is like these samples here. You could also obviously do it in a copper tone wire, like I said, brass, um, you know, to get the different colors that you want. I'm gonna clear all these samples out of the way. And we're gonna go over tools. Get out of there. Okay, so once we have your wire, you can work with 24. I've also done it with a thinner version. So right now I'm working on a sample with some 26 gauge sterling silver, and this is a double. So it's much smaller than you can see, like this is with a 24 and a much bigger mandrel. So you can work with, this is 28 gauge, you could work with, um, you know, 24. I don't know if I would really go bigger than 24, possibly, possibly 22, just cause it's gonna get really hard on your hands to start doing the weave if you get much thicker. So in addition to our wire, we got your wire there. You also gonna need something to do your weave around, which I would recommend getting a dowel rod. You can get these really inexpensive at hobby stores in all different sizes. So this one here that we're working with is a 0.437 inch dowel rod. If you don't have a dowel rod laying around, you can actually do it around a pencil. That would work really well. Um, anything really that's round like this that doesn't have an end that's gonna prevent it from sliding off when you're done. And you're not gonna use a whole length of this ease anyways. Um, so you really only need a small section at the top to work around. So anything round that you have laying around, you can use as a dowel rod. You're also gonna need something kind of sharp and pointy to get up underneath your weave. Sometimes when you're weaving, it's hard to get the wire to go underneath the next loop. So you can use like an awl to help you kind of pull the weave up to be able to weave. If you don't have an awl, you might have a thumbtack and you can use the thumbtack the same way. It's a little bit, you know, not as easy because it's short, but that works just as well. One other thing that you will need is something to wrap your starter around. So I like these plastic, you know, fake credit cards that they send you in the mail, or maybe you have a rewards card or, or something that you don't really use anymore, um, or possibly a empty Starbucks card. You could use any of these things to wrap your starter around. The other thing that you're gonna need is a draw plate. That's kind of the one thing that I haven't figured out a good substitute that of something that you would have laying around to be able to use. But the draw plates come in a bunch of different types as well. So you have wood ones, you have these plastic ones. Um, but basically what they all have in common is that they have graduated sizes of holes. And so when the weave is all finished, you actually pull this through the holes gradually smaller and it stretches your weave out. So your weave is gonna end up being much longer than it starts with, it starts out being. 
In addition to those items, you're also gonna need a pair of wire cutters to cut your wire and a pair of flat nose pliers can come in handy as well. And that's pretty much it. Oh, I forgot to show you. <laughs> My mama made me this draw plate. It's a piece of oak and she drilled some different size holes in it for me. So that's also an option. You do want a hard wood if you're trying to make your own because when you pull that wire through, if it's a soft wood, it'll just make your holes bigger as you're pulling the wire through. Okay, let's get started. I'm gonna move all these things kind of out of the way. All right, so to start with, I'm gonna start with a different color of wire than my weave is gonna be, just so you guys can see a difference. And I'm gonna take my expired, well, my empty Starbucks card, I should say, and I'm gonna weave, wrap the wire around it. So depending on how, like I said, how big you want your weave to be will depend on how many wraps you do. So we're gonna do seven. So, and I'm counting them across the bottom here. So there's two, three, four, five, six, and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, so seven coils. I'm gonna cut a little excess off of my spool here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide all of these guys off the card here hold them together in a bundle, and then I'm gonna wrap the ends around like so. Okay. All right, so I got a nice little bundle here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spread out these little legs to make kind of like a star. Okay, so like this, here's my little bundle. Oops, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my bundle on the top of my dowel rod like this and fold all the little legs down around the dowel like so. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of masking tape and I'm just gonna kind of tape them all down so I don't have to try and hold the, the little um, bundle where I want it. All right, so I'm just gonna tape that down. I've got too much tape. Okay, so now we have our starter. Now we need to get our wire that we're gonna actually work with. So I went ahead and cut out, cut a piece that is two yards of wire, 24 gauge, like I said, is what we're working with today. The easy way to measure wire if you're doing for like a yards is if you stretch your arms out, well one of your arms out, and you hold the wire at the end of your hand and you stretch it out across your chest so it comes to the middle of your chest, that's about um, three yards of, of wire. I mean one yard of wire, excuse me, three feet, one yard of wire. So you're gonna do that twice to give you two yards. Now what we're gonna do to start our weave is I'm gonna make a little bend at the end of the wire here and I'm gonna hook it into one of the loops. Can you see that there? All right. Now it's gonna be feel a little uncomfortable when you start because you're gonna have a lot of wire that's trying to go everywhere. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my wire and I'm gonna go up underneath that loop. So I'm not coming down from the top, I'm kind of going behind and I'm coming from the right and going to the left, okay? And all I'm doing is I'm pulling the wire all the way through till it makes a loop. Can you see that? Now your first couple rows are going to be kind of ugly and that's just getting them in place. So don't worry if your first couple rows are kind of misshapen looking. All right, so again, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna go to the next loop I'm gonna go behind the wire from the right towards the left and I'm gonna pull it 
all the way through. Now as we go, we want to keep these You want to keep these loops, try and space them out evenly. Now as you get more rows, it's going to be easier to get them to lay down flat. Like this one is wanting to not make a loop. But once you do several rounds, it'll start behaving itself better. So don't worry if at this point you're like, it's not, it's not looking nice, it's not laying down flat. What am I doing wrong? You're doing nothing wrong. It's just a little funky at the beginning. Again, we're going to go underneath. Come on. And we're gonna pull it all the way through. Ah! See, this is why I make a video for you guys. You can see that I have trouble with this too. If I just tell you how to do it, you'll think that, you know, that like I'm just perfect and come out with an excellent looking product with no trouble. All right. Um, just so you don't have to watch me do all that, I'm going to quickly go around and get back to where I start, and then I'm going to show you guys how to finish it off. Okay, so I made it all the way around. This is where I hooked it in to start with. Now this is technically my first loop that I did. Now I'm going to take my awl, and I'm going to kind of pull the wire up just slightly so that I can get up underneath it. All right, so I'm taking my wire, and I'm going behind that wire both pieces so i'm going behind the loop and then i'm pulling it till that loop there's forms a loop underneath the first loop okay so then i'm going to turn it slightly and i'm going to do that again going underneath that green loop and i'm pulling it so that it sits right around that loop. Can you see that? I'm going to do one more for you guys. Take this, go under there. Oops, sorry if I got off screen there. And pull it all the way there. All right, so you're just going to keep doing that all the way around until you get back to the start. I'm going to hurry up and do that, and then I will show you what to do next. Okay, so I've made my way all the way around again. Now what you're going to do for the next row is you're going to take your wire and you're going to go right through there. Can you see that? So between my first loop, which is up here attached to the green, and the second one that's right underneath that first loop, I'm going behind the loop. Okay? And then you're going to pull it all the way through. like that all right and then you're going to turn it and you're going to do the next one so these next couple rows is where you're trying to get everything spaced out correctly so you might have a row that everything's like really tight next to each other and a couple loops that are further apart from each other so if you need to get two loops to be a little bit close to each other if you can see how these two this one and this one are really close together but then there's a bigger gap there and there's a bigger gap here. So what you do is when you pull it, you slightly pull more this, this direction to pull that row slightly over. All right. So then as you go, it slowly gets everything in position. So that's going to create a bigger space between these two on the next row. So just do that for a few rows, you know, kind of pulling slightly more one direction or maybe not pulling quite as tightly if you need a little bit more space and you'll get your, your rows spaced out nice and evenly. Alrighty. So that's all you're gonna do to, to do the Viking weave is you're just gonna keep going around and 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 around, and around, and around, and around in circles, weaving the wire exactly like you've done before. Like I said, once you've got it kind of spaced out well, just going to keep going around. What I would say is you got to be careful because it does like to get stuck on the dowel rod if you go too far down. Like if you just keep weaving all the way down, you're going to have a really hard time getting it off the dowel rod when you're finished. 
So what I recommend doing is that once you have several rows locked in place, that you actually start scooching it up the dowel rod. So I'll show you the one that I've already kind of have a section on it. So this one here, so the dowel rod's only like this much and I actually would probably only put about that much on the dowel rod at a time. So all of this is above the dowel rod. So you just kind of stick it on the end and you work your way around and then scooch it up as you go. Like I said, so it doesn't get too tight and stuck on the dowel rod. That'd be really a big bummer if you got to the end and you couldn't get it off your dowel rod. So just, you know, about that much on the dowel rod at a time and scooch it up as you go. But that's all there is to this. So it's kind of, you could sit there, you know, listening to, you know, a TV show. I think a lot of craft projects, you can't really watch a TV show and do a craft project at the same time, but you can definitely listen to a TV show and do a craft project at the same time. This is something you could just work on, you know, a little bit at a time at night and eventually you'll have a, a piece that you can turn into a bracelet. Okay. So I think that's enough of me showing you how to do the weave. I think you get the idea at this point, right? You're just going behind the last loop. You're taking your wire, going behind. Can you see that? Going behind that loop and pulling it all the way through. All right, so once you have your piece finished, I'm gonna show you what you'll do next. Let's try it. Okay, let me set that one aside. Okay, so we have this one here. Okay, we got this guy here, and I'm gonna measure it and show you how long it starts and how long it ends up being. So this piece had the, the seven the seven loops that we did, it's a single weave all the way around. It's around that dowel rod um, size that I told you was a, what did I say, it was a 0.437 inch dowel rod. And the piece measures um, just a little over three inches if I measure it from the top of here to the end, okay? So just a little over three inches. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your draw plate and you're going to find the, the hole that it fits through, okay? And you're just going to pull it through. And I might run it through that hole twice before moving down to the next hole. Oh, I moved up. <laughs> Move down. Move down. Smaller, not bigger. All right. So this one I started at 13.5. And I'm just slowly going down smaller and smaller size holes. You can already see that it's, it's starting to stretch out. You can't see too crazy much of a difference at this point. And you can draw this down till however much you want. Like, so you could stop, if you like the weave more open, you could stop when the weave is more open, or you could keep going to get a tighter, closer weave, or just keep going until you get it the length that you want. So I'm gonna show you this one. We're gonna show see how big it grows. So you will know how long you need to make your weave piece to get to be long enough for a bracelet. All right, I'm gonna keep doing that, and once I get it to the size that I want, I'll show you guys what it looks like. Okay, so I went all the way down to a 4.5 on this, this particular draw plate, and you can see how tight the weave looks. Now, like I said, depending on how many times you pull it through, you can come out with a thinner, like a more open weave, like this one here. But this is the one that I started with. So, I, like I said, it was almost, it was a little bit bigger than three inches when we started. Look at that. It's like seven and a quarter now inches long. 
So it it more than doubled in length. Like I said, if I didn't pull it as tight, like if I wanted the weave to be more open, I would need to not, um, I would need to make it longer to start with because it wouldn't stretch as much. But there you go. I'm going to show you guys how to turn your weave into a necklace or a bracelet, how to attach little ends to each end and turn this into a piece of jewelry. All right, let me go gather, gather up some supplies and I'll be right back. Okie dokie, so let's add the ends to our piece here. So how do you do that? Well, this is the end um, and this is where we started. So we need to cut off this section here so we can attach our ends. All you're gonna do is you're gonna go in and you're gonna start clipping those legs that we made to start with, okay? Now this will be more obvious if you do it a different color like I did when um, on this one that I was showing when I started, the starter one. But okay, once you have that clipped, all you're gonna do is you're gonna take another piece of wire and you're gonna go through all those little loop ends, grabbing the loop ends, okay? So I'm gonna go through, like I just went through three of them and you don't have to go through them all the same direction either. You're just trying to grab them all to um, secure them. You're gonna be underneath a bead cap, like on this one, so you won't even see those ends when you're done. So it doesn't have to be real pretty. You're just trying to grab hold of everything to secure it. Okay. So once you have like all your little loops grabbed onto, here's one more. You're going to take the one tail end and you're going to just wrap it a couple times around the longer piece. Just so it doesn't unravel and clip that off. Okay. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a bead cone that this fits on. So I have a couple different bead cones. There's this one. Now, because of how much, many times I pulled that weave through, this cap is just a little bit big. I don't know if you can see that, it's just a little big. So I'm gonna go with this one, I think, for this bracelet. Fits a little bit better. There you go. So you're gonna put that on there. See, so you pulled all those ugly ends up inside the bead cap, the bead cone. And then I'm gonna put one little silver bead at the end there. And then I'm gonna grab a pair of, of round nose pliers and I'm gonna do a simple wire wrap loop. I do have a video on a simple wire wrap loop if you need step-by-step -step instructions for this. If you can't tell what I'm doing, you can watch that video. I'm sliding in my clasp. I'm gonna grab hold of that loop and I'm gonna do a wire wrapped loop. All right, so I wrapped all the way down to the bead and then I'm actually overlapping my wraps to give myself a little sturdier section there. Okay. And then I'm gonna clip off the excess tail there and kind of flatten that down. All right, so there's your clasp on one side. Now you're gonna to go to the other side and you're gonna to need to do the same thing on the other side. Now if you've made your bracelet longer than what you need, so for me, if you see, like I actually don't need all of this. So if you made it too long, all you have to do is you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna clip it off. And the great thing about this is it doesn't really unravel like it would if it was thread, okay? Ow, be careful, be careful not to poke yourself with sharp pieces of wire. All right, so once you've clipped all the way through, you're gonna do the same thing. I'm pulling out any like little loose pieces that I got from clipping the wire. Just get rid of those guys. 
Um, and then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to take your piece of wire. You're going to go through all the loops. Oh, look, made myself bleed. Jewelry making is a dangerous business, people. And you're going to add your cone to the other side. I'm running out of recording space on my phone, so I'm going to go ahead and end the video there. And then we will have another video on how to do the double, the double weave. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye.